Hello and welcome to the Rover podcast. This week's guest is Martha Bertels uh, in the from the 2021 Blue Boat and she rode at Brooks and last year won the Ireland Challenge Cup as well. Um, Martha, could you just introduce yourself quickly? Um, well, yeah, you just did. That's that's <laughs> me. There's not really much else to say. I am um, Martha. That's it. Awesome. <laughs> uh, you recently wrote an article for Junior Rowing News, sort of about your experiences being a uh, woman in rowing and sort of how you felt and sort of how you channel your like anger sometimes through the sport of rowing. Um, could you sort of dive a bit deeper into your thoughts on that and sort of what made you write that article even? Mm-hmm. I think it was just yeah, like, um, as I say uh, in what I wrote, that I just kind of suddenly became aware of the fact that I'm, I'm I find myself getting angry a lot in in and out of training about various things often pertaining to being a woman or more importantly not being a man and but at the same time I didn't really feel like I there was much kind of outlet for me to express it and I was just kind of thinking about the inequalities of um in terms of kind of the emotional narratives that we get fed as men and women and and what's okay and what's not okay and um just kind of got me doing a bit of research as well into other sports and kind of just various different things about um kind of what it means to be staring down the barrel of a gun of of what it is to be a woman in sport but um yeah it was just kind of this need to give voice to I think some of it was just the need to release and give voice to some of the rage that I did feel yeah and and what do you think it is that makes rowing such a good sort of outlet for that um well it's strange isn't it because it's a good outlet for it but it's also a good kind of um what's the word it's a good manufacturer of it Mm -hmm. as in rowing is extremely anger inducing um both as a woman and just in general but uh I think Definitely the fact that it's the kind of sport that it does just require so much time. Like you can't, no one ever kind of like, no one can be amazing to begin with. Mm-hmm. You you just have to have put in the years and the time. And I think it's kind of that, the nature of it, the time spent on the erg on the water, in the gym, whatever. There's like a lot of, you do a lot of reflection. You do a lot of, you know, thinking about why you're here and what you're doing it for. And for me, that is often tinged with kind of, you know, wanting to be a powerful woman and inspire other women and kind of fight back against people that think that I can't do it because I'm a woman. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's good in that sense. Yeah. Um, and you sort of mentioned in your article as well, you'd sort of done a bit of campaigning to sort of try and get uh, more sort of, I guess, rights for women within rowing and your campaign for, was it the trousers at Henley? Mm-hmm. Um, that was a couple of years ago, was it now, was it? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think sort of led for you to take the initiative to sort of campaign for that? Well, I can't take the credit. It, I kind of was part, was part of the idea, but it was actually my very good friend, Georgie Grant, who was um, in the Blue Bow with me in 2021, um, who set up the petition and kind of did all of the social media stuff, um, trying to get the um, uh, the people at Henry, Henley Royal to review their dress code because it said because basically yeah women can't wear couldn't wear trousers in the stewards area and then in the end it was this kind of like I can't remember what happened actually I'm not sure that they they didn't explicitly tell us that they had changed it but we just remember like a few months after that they'd quietly changed it without really wanting to draw attention to it so Mm. we thought it was a good good outcome but um I think we were just quite like-minded when we were at Oxford together we were very kind of um we were both very outspoken people I think we were both fed up a lot of the time with the ways in which we were treated differently as females um and it was just a pretty like I think it was during lockdown I think Georgie definitely thought that it was a pretty small well small but big small task but big impact like obvious thing that we could do Mm -hmm. to uh, make the difference but I think like to come back to like you know everything I'm saying I'm kind of saying about rage is I think there's this real frustration with kind of gender inequality in sport that it feels very hard to kind of, um, 
it feels like there's not like a, a real how do I say I'm not phrasing this very well I wrote it down somewhere hang on there's no like there's no charity that I can donate to that really materially can change people's perception about women it's mm -hmm. this whole thing of like you know, there's great there's great campaigns out there there's women in sport there's um women's sport trust this girl can all of these initiatives that are about getting women in sport keeping young girls in sport making them feel you know inspired but at the same time it's kind of like it's so hard when you're pushing back against the tide of of you know dissuasion and people that don't believe that you know yeah. women are supposed to be in, in in particularly elite sport um so i think yeah it's like not that i'm not obviously really pleased with what with what georgia managed to do with that petition but just this i think to to kind of go on our theme of what i was writing about is this feeling that it is kind of fighting an uphill battle a lot of the time mm -hmm. Um, and you sort of you got into rowing relatively recently, if I'm correct, in terms of you started at uni, um, which is a bit later than a few people. Do you think you <laughs> had a channel to sort of um, get or sort of an outlet for this sort of rage and anger um, before rowing? Or do you think it's rowing that sort of allowed you to voice this and sort of act on it a bit more? I don't know. I think it's such a kind of um, double edged sword because it is such a it has been such an empowering thing for me and it's really made me kind of like understand my relationship with myself and the person the kind of person that I want to be and mm -hmm. kind of you know I'm not shy you know about you know trying and failing and being humiliated those are all the kind of you know natural parts of sport that then are such a key lesson in life but at the same time so that because I was quite like a shy very unsporty kind of artistic teenager that was really like amazing and then the you know the women that I've met through sport I've met so like the most inspiring just incredible women that just mm -hmm. you know have completely inspired me throughout my career and you know that will continue to but at the same time it's it's kind of has been infuriating coming into this environment as you know an 18 year old who was kind of like oh this is cool you know doing sport yeah. never really done this before and then this realization sort of probably when I started doing the boat race stuff which is obviously very kind of entrenched in elitism and tradition and kind mm. of the right way that things should be and the fact that you know it's the men's boat race and then we are kind of like this we are the the kind of uh warm-up fight we're playing second fiddle um that was incredible it was kind of just confusing for me because it was like how is this thing that's so wonderful and and um yeah empowering and and life-changing for me at the same time kind of also making me feel inferior if that yeah. makes sense mm -hmm. um yeah and do you think have you sort of experienced that in other things so sort of when you were doing your art and things like that did you feel that pressure as a woman that potentially sort of your art or whatever it was that you were creating at the time wasn't being seen because you were a woman I don't know. I think, <clears throat> I mean, it was different because I was at school. I was still going through my kind of awkward becoming and and yeah. just discovering who I was in general. But I never really, I never, I, I don't think I was kind of a big time. I'm such a huge feminist now. People, Some people probably call me like a feminazi. Um, and I feel like I see inequality everywhere now. But I think... Then it, I think I just kind of had the naivety of thinking that never really seeing myself as different. I think this big thing that sport shows up is that is there because it's this obviously physical thing, the bodiliness of it that reminds you of your physical difference. I didn't have as, you know, as an art student, for example, or as, as an English student, that was all about kind of connecting with other people, regardless yeah. of difference. Yeah. And everyone's kind of, you know, our fundamental, you know, kind of cognitive powers we were on the, everyone's on the same level in that sense mm -hmm. but I mean I was naive about it but that I think that has been a whole different element of kind of oh, like the awakening to my own bodily femaleness which is kind mm -hmm. of very strange in a world which is you know adamant on kind of suppressing all of female bodily functions and kind of you know creating shame around childbirth and periods and and you know everything about how our body's different and how it's this kind of you know sex objects but also source of extreme anxiety 
that I yeah. think infiltrates even women's own relationships with their own bodies and which is only exacerbated by a, a sport in which we're being compared to male bodies. So do you find yourself comparing yourself to sort of male males in sport in terms of especially sort of in sports like rowing where there is obviously that physicality difference where males tend to be just bigger or heavier than women in general like just sort of because that's how we're built in a way do you find yourself mm -hmm. still comparing yourself to males yeah absolutely I mean you know how it is um we both come from Brooks like the men's percentages and the women's percentages get compared we're all we're all ranked together mm -hmm. um that of course I'm going to compare myself and it's this constant thing of is it is it because I'm not trying hard enough or is it just because I'm not male I think there's this tendency to we view ourselves and we are encouraged to view ourselves as little men as if we train as hard as you guys that we will be as fast as you guys which is just never going to happen in endurance sport mm -hmm. um and it's just it's just so like like so like frustration to like to the point of just wanting to cry when you know I am training as hard as all of my male counterparts mm. but on 2k for example like if me and you were to sit down now and do 2k you're probably going to finish you know a minute faster than me and mm. I've got which is why I never understand why men's sport it gets the kind of like prime spot and you know that somehow garners more respect because I'm here busting my ass and I'm doing it for a whole minute you guys so surely that's more impressive but anyway that's my view on it but I think yeah I think there's just so much kind of subtext which is about I don't know kind of like sort of how do I say um this low level attention that's being brought to our bodies even things like like the trans debate that's going on, well, it's not a debate anymore, is it? They've kind of, British Ring have marked their place, so, you know, kind of said where they are. I'm quite conflicted on the subjects because I'm very left-wing and I'm very kind of, you know, pro-trans, et cetera, et cetera. But um, yeah. what's frustrating is the fact that even that feels like this kind of, even the, the discussions around that um, kind of seem to point to our comparative patheticness mm -hmm. in comparison the male bodies um and i mean obviously it's it's they're, they're just vilifying trans people but the the narrative is that like we the, the kind of weak pathetic women need to be protected especially and the, mo the most frustrating thing is the fact that these people have probably never cared about women's equality in sport ever before mm -hmm. they're only choosing to pipe about it because you know it's their internalized homophobia and gender insecurity but it's like this really strange thing of there's this I need to come back to what you're saying about I've kind of gone on a rant there but <laughs> it's this constant but unspoken constant but unspoken comparison so in the same way yeah. this, this seems that constant physical awareness of the way that we're different but no one wants to talk about the fact that we have breasts and periods etc etc like it's this it's a, an elephant in the room I think it's this, I called it like the freakness of being female, which I think it is. I think that, you know, in a society designed for men mm -hmm. and in a sport designed for men, and, you know, I could go on about how, you know, rowing equipment isn't specialised enough for women, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, it's, there's just this constant but unspoken focus on how we're not men, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So do you think that sort of should mean... Sorry, do you think there should be more of a separation between men and women within the sport, or do you think there should be almost sort of a more combined way of looking at things and sort of blending, but in a way that makes it more uh, sort of easy for people to work together? So more sort of mixed boats and that sort of thing, or do you think there should be more of a separation and then sort of um, change? either men's or women's sport in a way to make it more uh comparable um I don't know it's an interesting question because it's almost like there's the whole kind of like post gender debate of whether like endurance sport should be organized into kind of like you know physicality and testosterone levels and that kind of stuff but mm -hmm. I think uh, as I kind of I think when you start out as a kind of like twee little live you know like girl boss 
mm-hmm. let's say, which I did once upon a time. The, the 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 goal was to be I wouldn't be as good as men, but I think as I'm getting older, it's more this realization that we are different and training as a woman is different and there needs to be so much more um kind of attention to how how just day in day out normal training is so affected by like our menstrual cycle like I read a statistic I'm I'm very kind of um skeptical of statistics but I I saw a statistic in an interesting BBC um article about um is very interesting about Matilda Hodgkins burn feeling like she wasn't kind of welcomed back onto the GB team after having a baby and it was talking about how uh 60 percent of elite female athletes feel that their period like quite you know noticeably affects their training and their performance Mm -hmm. but only 40 percent of them feel comfortable talking about that um with coaches which is just like a screaming issue to me yeah like i don't understand why we coaches male or female and not kind of because it's the same as if you were sick if you were sick and you went to a coach and was like these are the symptoms i'm experiencing um they would say well we're going to modify your training as Mm. as so and this is this is something which is so regular it's every single month and you know even even like i kind of i pay a lot of attention to my period now and i feel like i kind of quietly i won't i don't necessarily tell my coach this but i kind of quietly moderate my kind of like effort particularly with things like weights and stuff and and Mm. times when in your cycle when you're more prone to injury like I pay attention to it that but there's lots of people that don't and um like if we think how if we could kind of if we could kind of pay more attention to that as one thing how how much further could we push women's performance on and then it's even down to like small things like doing you know doing erg tests together like when we when the girls do a 30 minute test. We like to listen to music that's mostly female artists. But when the boys listen to music that's for the, th- I mean, I've been doing my 30 minute with the boys recently and I have to say the music has left me wanting, but you know, I've, I've soldiered on like small things like that. It's kind of, I just think there needs to be more consideration of how we are different and like we're training for the same goal, but it's a different route to get there in a way. If that, if that makes sense, yeah. I think that there needs to be so much more, um, attention to that and I think that then that would just create that would be so more kind of it would be so much less disheartening for women who are trying to be as good as men and you know men for the most part you wake up every day and if you if you eat enough and you sleep enough and and you get your recovery right most days you know you're going to wake up and feel pretty much the same whereas it can be such a lottery with women like physically emotionally everything like it can you can really feel this lack of control of your body which is really really again anger inducing but if we kind of if we can kind of normalize that then i just think that training would be really like really changed and revolutionized for us yeah um having sort of i was the head coach uh, the head women's coach of a um, college um, when i was coaching and i did every now and then sort of get um one of the girls come up to me and say i'm not feeling so great today it's it's my period right now what do you think that and i guess as as my role as a coach of a women's team it probably i should have put more effort into research and things like that um to sort of understand what i should do in those circumstances um what what do you think um coaches should be doing to sort of help women that are um struggling with their period or their sort of um not feeling so hot because of sort of reasons that maybe a male coach wouldn't understand um well I think it's difficult isn't it because there's not really much that a a man can do like you Mm -hmm. you you don't have a period you don't really understand but but I think it's also difficult because there's there's genuinely not an awful lot of, of research that goes into this kind of thing um so what really needs to start is you know just it which which speaks to just the the need for a kind of like whole cultural shift in the way that we understand um menstruation and and women's bodies is that there just needs to be so much more um um effort put into understanding how it affects our bodies Mm -hmm. um in the first place but then also in a training context so i guess until that until that information isn't is made available and kind of you know easily decipherable to you know the untrained eye then I guess it, if if you're a coach, it, I think it's just about communicating, and I think um, 
a lot of that comes from if you've got if you've got a good kind of mature two way um line of communication going then it is fine but i think it's, it tends to be in these kind of in these coach relationships that are you know belittling or um a particular if there's an if there's a if it's juniors and there's an age gap something like that i think that's where it it kind of if the the communication falls down a bit um but yeah yeah um uh and i guess we could sort of move on to so a lot of your article was about sort of um showing not showing but sort of uh out like an outlet for anger and rage um about mm -hmm. about this do you think the sort of physicality of rowing um would you say you're sort of physically uh sh pushing your anger out into sort of the rowing machine i guess or do you think it's your like um outing that in a different way when you're training well, I think I guess what I was trying to say is the fact that I think there's this expectation that we we just should channel our um we should just channel our anger into the sport. But what I, I think what I'm actually trying to say is that I want I want more opportunity for the fact that I don't want to have to feel angry. I don't want to have to feel angry about being a woman. I don't want to have to feel different. I don't want to have to feel inferior. Mm -hmm. So it's almost uh, what I'm trying to say is can we not create this open forum for discussion about what needs to change like this? I mean, this is kind of. I don't feel like I very often talk in this much depth with a man about, you know, the female body. Um, and, you know, most kind of, if I think, you know, anecdotally, most experiences of actually, you know, being the person who's trying to change someone's opinion, you most of the time you come away from a conversation with, you know, someone who wants to call Henley Royal men's Henley because we've mm -hmm. got women's Henley. Like you don't often come away from this conversation thinking, yeah, I really changed someone's mind there. Yeah like there needs to be more opportunity for us to to bring up these issues and and get angry about it and not be told to you know wind our necks in or stop being dramatic or you know the amount of times that I've had women say to me on the subjects of, of femaleness but also about kind of like elitism and, and even things like race that a general equality in Rome that like oh, it's so much worse in my day you should just be grateful but that's just mm. su such the wrong approach to me like it should be like you should be pushing forward you should be greedy for the changes that you can make you should be constantly like trying to do that next thing and for me I think there's a real long way to go um mm. in in lots of areas yeah I think there are a lot of steps at the moment that are be being taken particularly I think even within the last three four years they've now sort of introduced obviously a host of um events at Henley uh, I think I would definitely like to see more events, uh, more women's events at Henley Royal, um, even if that means sort of removing some of the men's events, I think even just because I think that equality is really important just because it, if you've got female athletes, I think you're probably more likely to get female audience as well. And I think that's a really important thing mm -hmm. to sort of expand yeah, the yeah. audience of the sport. But I think there's also things like this year, the president of Cambridge um, Boat Club is a woman this year. Um, her name evades me, but um, I think that's a really important step as well. And things like that are just going to be really important going forward as sort of the Oxford Cambridge Boat Race, as you sort of mentioned earlier, is something that's got a lot of these um, traditions and sort of um, things entrenched in the sort of history of it. Um, and I think it's fairly recently that the men's and women's boat race has only actually even been on the same course let alone sort of okay. to the same level of yes. publicity 2015. yeah um so i think the sort of steps that are being taken even over the last three years are sort of really important what what else do you think needs to be done um i guess yeah on a material level things like complete you know equality in events and I it's hard isn't it because everyone keeps saying well the regatta will be too long and mm -hmm. and the big thing I think the big thing is that we have Henley women's but I it does feel like a bit of a kick in the teeth for people to say mm -hmm. well you've got Henley women's because it's like it's not the same it's mm -hmm. and and I you know love Henley women's and I think it's an amazing event and I have so much respect for you know the people that have, that have built that but there's also you know the kind of um from the outside public perception it's not as big can't rival henley royal in terms of its mm -hmm. 
its kind of commercial presence and uh, you know even things like the quality of the streaming and um the facts obviously the screaming um fact that it's only 1500 meters which somehow makes it seem like it makes it seem like we're not strong enough to race hmm. you know 2112 meters or whatever it is yeah which we obviously are and that was i, I remember talking to annabelle Ayers about um annabelle Ayers, who's a, a, a former olympian in oxford blue talking about how she used to campaign to get it uh, the women's boat race onto the tideway and she was saying that obviously that's a huge media event how how enraging that was because in the public perception especially for people that were watching that on tv that didn't know a lot about rowing Hmm. like the women that were still doing it henley they were doing it on the henley course because they weren't strong and fit enough to do it on the championship course Mm -hmm. and i think it's a similar thing here on on a on a smaller scale but the same thing um and just uh you know i mean it's hard because a lot of a lot of the changes i think need to come from cultural shifts but yeah. it's so hard to pinpoint or to catalyze that that kind of change you know to make um to make you know men you know male athletes truly across the board believe that women are working as hard as them because i can think of plenty of times when my own, my male counterparts have told me that i'm not working as hard as them and that has been so heart-wrenching for me um, with things like you know the culture of sexual assault and abuse that happens um, you know in university sports teams and you know Rowan's no stranger to that um, like but then again that's part of an even bigger issue of mm-hmm. sexual violence just you know everywhere in everything and how again we have this understanding of women's bodies this kind of entitlement um, that I think that that that's interesting the kind of understanding of how the kind of male consciousness of believing that they are entitled to to women's bodies kind of complicates this um, relationship to the kind of like female athlete's body. I think that is a an interesting thing, which I won't attempt to dismantle now because we'll be here forever. But <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, it's all of these, like the, the dark machinery of, of all of these different things about the, the, the kind of status of, of woman in society that really the problems in sport are only... A manifestation of that they are an offshoot of that what really needs to happen is we need you know total equality but i mean someone would say that's impossible but uh, you know you've got to be if you're going to fight the fight you've got to be an idealist and i like to think that it is possible but maybe not in my lifetime but hopefully through writing more um you know angry articles maybe in the future yeah um and so as a male or even as a female, what do you think it is that um, anyone can do? So I was speaking with Gareth um, a couple of weeks ago about sort of what we can do to sort of promote um, mental health within sports and outside of sports as well. Um, what do you think it is that we could do to sort of promote these ideas and sort of get these out there? Um, I think it's hard, isn't it? Because it's almost like if you intellectualise it too much or kind of um, abstract it too much, it becomes kind of twee, this kind of like... Mm-hmm. you know support your female support your female teammates it doesn't it seems insincere doesn't it um but i think talking to your female teammates learning from them listening to them believing them i think a big part a big a big part a big part is um believing kind of women when they say that they're in pain or that they can't do something because mm-hmm. like the amount of times that you know i've seen my very you know experienced um teammates be told that they're not being tough enough when I know for a fact that they're the kind of people that are very very tough and it's not it's not you know just a normal kind of like you know having a tough day like believing them in that sense and you know again that extends to all of life in terms of you know if you look at the statistics about um kind of women in in healthcare and how they're treated by doctors and kind of dismissed um but yeah, I just think learning from them, giving them space to talk and and I don't know, like if if there's a way in which you as an individual, as an athlete or a coach, you know, can make someone make a make a female athlete feel important, whether that's through, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I think 
I have to say honestly, I don't necessarily I don't I don't necessarily have all the answers. I don't necessarily know is the thing. Yeah. And that's the thing with this kind of, you know, beautiful post gender utopia that I'm picturing, is mm. we don't know how to get there. Yeah. And because if we did, we'd be there already. Mm -hmm. Um so it's a trial and error thing. It's about but primarily I think it's this need to listen to and give voice to female athletes. Mm -hmm. As a yeah. step one. Um, and I'll, I'll guess we'll finish off with um, a bit of storytelling. Um, what could you sort of describe to me a time where, or an event where you sort of felt really empowered as a woman? Oh God. Um, oh, that's actually a really hard question to answer. Sorry, I should have warned you. In sport or in general? Uh, I think I uh, will we'll stick with in sport um, to sort of keep on theme a bit. I think I think times when I feel kind of quietly empowered is when I have when I if I have the ability to kind of be a leader through being empathetic because I think there's great strength that kind of like. Not saying that men don't have empathy, but I think, you know, women are very much socialised to think about other people before themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's that kind of motherhood um, machine. Um, and I think instances where I can really, truly understand or get through to a teammate who's struggling with something and make them feel better about it in a way that then um, makes them a better athlete or like you know, gets them through something... That I think when that happens, I think that it to me is fundamentally my femaleness, and that's a, a kind of aspect that I'm claiming as mine, and which yeah. I think men don't necessarily get as as much. And I I think I feel really lucky to have that. I feel really blessed that I have that connection with my teammates. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks very much for talking today. Um, I've really enjoyed what you've been saying, and I hope the sort of message can get pushed out to a few people um that will sort of take it to heart um and hopefully help promote promote these ideas into the future and sort of help get this sort of image and um any sort of uh questions answered um so thanks very much for coming on thanks anyone for listening and i hope to see you in the next podcast thanks ben cheers mm -hmm.